Hey guys, hey guys, how you doing? Okay, what we're gonna do is I took some of our from our lessons, got to a certain point, and I pulled the game off. Now this is a game between Topolov is white, Vaseline Topolov, versus Caruana, Fabiano Caruana. And so I'm just gonna get a sip real quick. We'll get started. A lot of people don't know Caruana plays played the French. <laughs> So it's uh, so it's it's been played by all the greats. Yeah, I mean, so that's one thing we have to remember is it's not just an old line. The advanced variation may be old, but it's still a good line to learn. And there we go, the advanced. Okay. C5. Remember how we do it? It's kind of a standard line. And then bishop D. See, even uh Fabi plays bishop to uh, d7. A lot, of the, a lot of the old main lines uh, that we're going to probably be going over later on uh, to pull up so we can get some games maybe tomorrow. It, it, it comes with bishop to, I mean, queen to b6. And then remember a4, a3. And then at this point, we, we usually go there. Or remember, we can actually come here. Remember that that's actually the main line that we talked about that um, national master John the Watson talks about. And then he says if if he takes here, you go and grab that pawn. And then if the knight moves, remember what we do? You can actually grab another pawn, or you can take the bishop. And which I'd probably take the bishop here. And then if he plays here, you just grab you can grab another pawn. And potentially, you could, I believe this may be a uh, Grandmaster, oops, sorry, my bad there. I believe this is a draw, if I'm not mistaken. I don't, nope, you think we just, we could pick up some pawns. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're okay in that line, so he wouldn't be able to actually play uh, Bishop Takes. Remember with this, he more likely is going to have to play uh, b4. Remember we talked about this, and then what you do is first of all, sorry, you take here, he takes, and then you jump your knight in. Now you have three attackers on this pawn, and there's th two ways that the bishop can actually handle this. First way is uh, bishop to e3, and second way is bishop to uh, d uh, b2. So e3 and b2 because that guards that three times. And then let, let's just say b2, right? We play bishop up. We'll say he plays bishop here. We castle. And if he if he takes, which we it's not a problem for us, because now we have the two bishops. And if he castles, we play f6. And if he takes, we take. And now we're again tacking it three times, and with a rook. So we have to. Well, we're, but we'll get back to the game. That's kind of <laughs> we kind of strayed off with some of those lines. But I gotta tell you, the French get so much fun when you uh, when you start learning it. Okay. So rather than that one line that we talked about, uh, the old main line of Queen B6, we um, Fabi played. Uh, the new main line basically bishop to d7. Bishop e2 which is the most concrete line for white. Knight g e7. I usually play this. I don't play this. I don't like um, kind of fracturing my pawns. Uh, some would actually play there but there's really no point to doing that at this moment because all you're doing because there's no queen to b6 now the bishop can actually take and shatter your kingside pawns. You don't want to do that. So there we go. We love it. Topolov knows our our favorite move. Harry, excuse me, Harry, Harry. And now in comes b6. So now this is for real. There is some damage gonna be happening pretty soon. We're gonna probably have a knight to. Uh, F2, I mean F5, and that that's going to be a pretty interesting. Uh, okay, now we take. Remember, 
we talked about this. If the knight goes here, or if the knight goes here, we take, then he takes back because the reason we do before that, it let's let's say that we just took, right? We takes. He can get his uh and then let's say we play knight here. He can actually get his knight to uh C three, which is a, a spot on position for for uh, white, so white would love to have his knight on c3. But if we play here, and then he goes knight to either a3 or knight to d2 or bd2, we can actually take, and he doesn't have the um, c3 square. But there is a reason. If you guys want to know why, why would you think that pawn takes, pawn takes? that the knight knight actually I'll just tell you okay knight goes to c2 this brings the defender to the pawn so like if we uh, if we try knight here he has knight uh, c2 and that guards the pawn uh, three times and we're attacking it um, three times so it, there, the moves do have points to it but Fabi uh, sees that this is a setup of, of a classical line, which is uh, knight b4. Knight b4 has an idea of potentially going rook to c8, and maybe knight um, to c2 check. This stops knight to c2. So more likely we're going to try rook c8. That's probably our idea. So h5. Fabi doesn't want um, a Vaseline, Vaseline Topolov to uh, play h6 uh, six because then if he play, he'd have to play g, g6 and the uh, light squared f6 um, would be weak and in some cases there's been a lot of mates on g7 with the queen so and you really don't want to get this uh, open because potentially if this opens, this will be a dangerous file for white. So Fabi just decides, you know what? Um, I'm not even gonna think about that. We're just gonna shut it down, shut that idea down. And he's basically pointing the finger at Topolov and saying, Topolov, what are you gonna do now? Your idea was to play a um, h6. You have an overextended h pawn what's your next move my friend and uh, Topolov knows that he doesn't really want to castle queenside but sometimes you're almost forced to do that more likely Topolov's going to castle kingside so Fabi wants to later on if Topolov does Fabi wants to castle queenside and then park his king on b8 safely so, but the bishop then says, you know what? Um, I want, there's a dangerous knight on uh, b4. Yes, I potentially would have to trade it off for bishop takes knight. And then queen takes check, queen d2, queen takes uh, d2, and then knight takes d2. I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's this, 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 takes, and then knight takes. We've kind of liquidated down into an end game where this would be good for um, Topolov because what Topolov wants is because he controls the center so heavily. He wants to get to an end game because this, this will actually bind up Black's position. He's got more space and he will have more room to mobilize his forces. So we're but we're like we don't really much mind if he takes it actually be a mistake if he took because this is potentially what could happen and then now we uh, we'd probably play knight here he'd play knight back here and we'd probably have to somehow get our bishop over here so more likely to play there but then you could drop a knight and so you gotta gotta be super duper careful now the bishop uh, does double duty. It, it 
got ready to at any moment take the knight and also protects the pawn so that that bishop's doing a lot of work it could potentially be an overloaded piece so probably plays on knight e c6 and in most cases this would be a bad move because potentially there's a trapping move of um, a3 but the knight's on a3 so there's not really much to be too concerned about also this uh, takes scope on this pawn and potentially a uh, a5 and maybe even a4 and then the knight comes back and reroutes in you, you never know this this could be anybody's game right now so h uh, rook h3 this move right here is uh, it's saying to um, black basically I'm going to be castling queenside because once you move your rook it's basically no more castles you guys of course know that so black decides you know what I, you're not going to castle kingside so there's no you know, pawn storm, like you too, you know, all these little little bitty uh, soldiers just keep popping out of the woods everywhere and they start, you know, appearing. No, 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 no. White's going to want to castle queenside as well. So he's not going to just, you know, fracture his queenside. But he does have a pretty good bind on the kingside. So we got to remember, Topolov does have a real big attack attack potentially on the king side so that's kind of what the idea of rook to uh, g, uh, h3 is it's saying that I want to play g4 and then after g4 I want to get my rook potentially to g3 and potentially I can start maybe uh, or maybe uh, g4 g5 but that might be a little too over Oh, a little bit too over. Maybe it would work. Hmm. This is this is going to be a like what we said. Overextended pawns. They can't move back, and they are a bone in the throat of a player. If they if they can be kept, they're a bone in the throat of um, black. But they're also a big time drawback for white. So we have to keep that in mind when we're looking at, when we're pushing our pawns. Do we have enough? What is the benefit of doing that? Is it worth it to overextend it to get space? And if yes, then most definitely go for it. If you can hold it and you basically boa constrict your opponent, if you can do that, and you, like Jeremy Silman says, you, you basically take the wind out of your opponent's sail and they don't have really any room to move around and that's usually when uh, your opponents start making inaccurate moves because they get um, frustrated that they can't move and frustration of course you guys know causes maybe your opponent to fling a pawn up the board or move for a, a premature attack and maybe um, castle because he's just tired of not doing something just keep that in mind when you um, get a chance to put a grip don't you know I'm an attacker I know a lot of you guys that watch probably are attackers and some are positional players Positional players uh, like Karpov, and I'm trying to think. I think I don't think Alakine was. I'm not saying. I think I know Karpov was. There's a couple. I think Steinitz might have been one. If I'm not, if I'm not correct, guys, put in the chat. I'm willing to learn because I know a lot of the grandmasters, but some of their styles sometimes I get mixed up. You know, so I'm always willing to modify, and that that's that's how you learn is. By taking um, correction, like the Lord said, properly. What that what that means is listening. And like a, a foolish man doesn't, or a foolish person, it doesn't matter who it is. If you don't take um, the advice of somebody who is wiser and uh, older than you, 
and listen to them, or maybe they might not, they might even be younger than you, but they have, um, they've learned something that you haven't learned, still listen to that. Don't, don't just say because they're younger than you, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. Who knows, they, you might, you might want, need to learn something like in computers or something that helps you with the chess engine. Some of the, these kids nowadays, that are like 13, 14, 15, know more about how chess engines work than most adults. So if they if they ever ask you, have you uh, thought of this chess engine or something, and they want to show it to you, more than happy, do that. Because that's a, another opportunity, if it's um, reasonably priced or free, uh, or available, I should say available, because I don't like free, because, you know, like, like what they say, there is no free lunch, you know. So I'll just say readily available to the public. Take advantage of that. Trust me, knowledge in chess is vital. I remember what uh, Grandmaster Simon Williams told me, because I've been listening to some of his tapes um, on the master method. He said that what you have to do is it's good to listen to you know YouTube and all that about uh, you know openings and stuff, but he says what you have to do is when you get a sideline or something like that that you're interested in go to a database find the highest rated player that plays that type of line don't don't he says don't try to learn their method like he says I can't be Magnus Carlsen I can't be Fabiano Caruana you know I can't be Shaq you know or uh, Kariak and or Gary but I, I can do one thing if they play a certain line if Gary played a line like in the French, that he kept winning and winning and winning. Why did he win? What what did he do that I need to learn so that I can apply it in my games? That's what I got. I've got to interject some. I know I'm going going on a tantrum a tantrum here about talking talking and not doing the game. But remember, five minute games don't help you. Okay. They, they only, uh, like Grandmaster Simon Williams says, they test your instinct. And if your instinct, if you don't have the maturity of all the knowledge that we're talking about, going over higher player games of certain opening lines all the way to the end to see type of patterns that arise, you're going to always get, I'm going to say this, I'm sorry, it's, it may sound cruel, you're always going to get defeated by a higher rated player because they took the initiative to uh, learn maybe a Gary Kasparov game. And so you'll be you'll wonder why why do I always you know lose why does he move so fast because he knows that pattern I know I'm going on a tantrum again of talking but it's really important trust me take take what I'm saying it's uh, you don't want to uh, lose a whole bunch of games it also teaches your mind bad habits you uh, Grandmaster Simon Williams Grand um, National Master um, Jeremy Silman, and I, I'm i not sure about John Watson. I've listened to some of his. I'm not sure how he feels about five-minute games. But they, they, do, they don't allow you to strategize and set up plans. It's, it's more about how fast you can move and can you uh, out-time your opponent. Can you, will your opponent lose on time if you make a mistake? So trust me, don't, don't do a lot of those. I know they're fun. I know they're fun guys, okay? You know, because, you know, you get a thrill like, yeah, I, I beat, you know, because you're a fast mover and you may have a certain pattern. Yeah, I beat like a 2,000 level or something like that, and I'm only a certain, this level. But if you sit down to a classical game, which is around an hour plus, and then there's, uh, rather than having no um, time uh, duration, what that means is time delay, there's something called time delay in the classics. So they may have five to ten seconds time delay, which means they could play if they know the end game pattern. They can not lose any time if they move it like within four seconds and they tap the clock. They won't lose any time. So they may have three seconds on their clock, but if they know the pattern, you won't be able to time them like uh, out time them on Ally Chess. So I know I'm going on. I wanted to give you some advice so that you don't, you know, waste your your life on chess wondering why can I not get better. Okay. Back to Fabiano's game. Enough with that. <laughs> Enough knowledge. You guys are probably like, 
Man, when will he uh, get back to the game? I already know this stuff. But I appreciate that you do um, keep me on and not mute me, okay? Don't mute me, trust me. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, okay? Don't mute me halfway through what I was saying back there. If you re-listen again. Sometimes the best thing is reinforcement. Okay, so Fabi castled and uh, Topolov went king to f1. So in theory, Topolov could castle by hand to uh, king to g1, and then we we will have a <laughs> strangely king castled of opposite sides. One time I had to castle by hand, which what that means is if if uh, let's excuse me, let's say you have a pawn. I'll just pull up a board here. Uh, let's go back here. I'll just give this example from another game. Let's say you let's say you're like a bishop takes the king takes, and you have enough time, and this is all cleared out. We're gonna say this is all cleared out. What you can actually do is when the king comes up, you can bring this rook. Sorry, when the king comes up. And we'll just get rid of this thing here. You can bring the rook over here, the king's up here, and then you can direct your king down to c1 or c8 if you're black or c1 if you're white. And you that's called castling by hand. Okay. Okay, dokie. Okay, so that's kind of what, um, and this you can also walk your king this way. It doesn't have to be a rook comes over and then king comes down. One sec, I gotta cough for a second. <coughs> um, excuse me. And you don't have to just like come up, you know, if the rook's here, come over. That's not how it is all the time. Sometimes you could just walk like Topolov's basically gonna do it to g1. Uh, Fabi goes king b8, uh, bishop d2, which I have no idea what that actually does. If I was Topolov, I'm not sure how the computer feels about this, but I, I might just play um, king to g1 and then say, you know what, um, really there's not much that my opponent can do here. I have a pretty solid structure. Uh, I can always uh, play rook to g3 to protect my king. I'm out of this pin that potentially the bishop could uh, pin this bishop, the light square bishop, because um, white's bad bishop in the um, French white is uh, his dark square bishop. Of course, uh, black's bad bishop in the French advanced and in the French in general is his light squared bishop. So if um, these bishops were ever exchanged off, black would have a advantage because he would have his good bishop, which is his dark squared, and white would be stuck with his bad bishop, which is his dark, his dark squared bishop. So ours would be good and his would be bad. But if he traded these bishops off and we're left with a light square bishop, and he's left with a light square bishop, white has a slight advantage, a very slight advantage, because he has a good bishop, we have a bad bishop. These are the things you have to judge in when you're playing. But Topolov um, wants to see if he can't potentially maybe trade off and see if, um, see, I agree with this move here. I, I really, it's kind of, it's not a human move though, because we don't want to retreat back. We, in theory, want to move ahead if we're an attacker. I'm not sure if Topolov's an attacker or not. Um, usually, Super Grandmasters are, um, they're a conglomeration of all of it, so they're balanced. With the computer uh, engine era anymore now, there really is no attacker or um, positional player. There's those who know how to work the engines better and who also have more help with uh, the knowledge of 
how the engines work too because <laughs> it's it'd be it's really nice to have somebody called a second is a person who um, looks up all the games like you know how I went through our studies and then I pulled up Topolovs because we did one study I pulled out I pulled up a uh, Grush check Alexander Grush check we're gonna do a Caruana game that that was from one of our studies as well I took it to a certain point in the studies and then I checked it with this book down here and what happens is I'll show you it pulls up okay there's no game because we're all uh, right here there's this game it pulls up a bunch of games if you get to a certain point like let's say you like the Sicilian the dragon maybe the Karakon many different lines maybe the Slav are um, maybe like the London system for white you get it to a certain point and then what you do is you click this and a whole bunch of games come here also there's a bunch of moves that will uh, apply here as well uh, and it'll be like maybe five six maybe three moves and those are the moves that are usually readily played and uh, it's really nice that Ally Chess has games like that so I would uh, if I were you tap into it okay enough with that let's continue onward my friends um, so F6 Fabi's like he's like you know what if you don't want to move your knight back and then threaten when I play F6 A3 to trap my knight you know what I have already completed one break which is um, C5 my next break is F6 in the French and if I can get that in oh I am so happy as a French player I'm, I'm like I'm like a kid in a candy factory as they would say I'm so happy because this allows me to start uh, hacking away at the center of white E takes F G takes F and then now you get to see what the H idea was to dominate H um, the H file. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me get a drink of water or tea. Hmm. Good tea. I also have some water too if I wanted to switch out. I can also switch out. <clears throat> but the interesting thing is the idea for Topolov is to basically uh, outpost his rook or anchor it as my teacher would say on g6 and then start um, taking advantage of these weak pawns here the rook would come here and then start attacking these pawns so the bishop now goes now you see why Fabi does bishop to e8 it has, an, it has a double idea too maybe even a triple usually my teacher told me that <clears throat> you want to have each move you want to have at least two ideas behind them there are, if it's a one move idea like Topolov's move uh, queen up to d2 which the one move idea is this bishop attacks the knight that's it <clears throat> and it does attack this pawn but it's defended by a rook so not really a um, concrete idea I'm just giving you an example uh, in our game the e8 uh, move has a couple ideas behind it First of all, it's uh, threatening h5 because, of course, the, when the rook moved, the h5 uh, pawn became a weakness. Now you get to see that that becomes, because it's overextended, it becomes a um, weakness. So every pawn, uh, don't, they don't move back. <coughs> Excuse me. And so what you have to decide is, is it worth moving the rook over to dominate this file? So this bishop attacks his pawn, one idea, defends this knight, and potentially, if need be, we can always bring the bishop to f, uh, f6, which is the, it allows for a potential break in uh, e5. So bishop f7, f7 will uh, later on potentially allow an e5 push, because this bishop that comes here will guard this pawn once the pawn is moved up. <clears throat> but so white has to deal with the threat at this moment. So he goes uh, knight h4 with of course an idea 
Topolov's idea is to drop the knight into h6, or g6, sorry. And this is called, of course, you guys know, an outpost. And the outpost is really strong. And if uh, Fabi ever trades off his light square bishop for the knight, um, not not a really good idea because then uh, Topolov would have a very close to the queenie square pass pawn protected by a rook. And of course, rooks love to be behind pass pawns. We know that from our end games. So bishop d6, and now uh, Topolov brings his rook to g7. <clears throat> this has a potential idea of maybe having some attack on the B rank, or the seventh rank, sorry. But remember, it can still be attacked. Remember, there we go, e5. There's no knight on uh, f5 uh, anymore, or f3, sorry. <clears throat> There's no knight on f3, which would be readily able to, if takes, would be able to take back. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm going to get a drink of water. Okay. <coughs> so D takes E5. D takes E5. Fabi acquires something that's really important in the French. He has eliminated uh, white center. So this is huge. It may only be a slight, very slight advantage, but that he has a mobile center <coughs> means now that this bishop, the light square bishop, excuse me, will be a um, pretty good piece now. When the pawns were locked and it kept the pawns here, when the pawns were like this, and there was a pawn here and this pawn wasn't there of course, um, this light square bishop was horrible. But now that all this trading has come off, come to the board, there's a uh, bishop to d7 idea now. <clears throat> it doesn't really do anything, but the whole point is in that is the bishop now has free reign. Before this pawn was here, which meant that the bishop didn't have any scope. <clears throat> it was entombed behind its pawns, but not anymore. It's free to roam. So knight g6. <clears throat> One second, I'm going to cough. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> this idea is because he's going to try, he wants to potentially put some pressure on this pawn with maybe a rook sliding over and attacking here. I doubt he can't move the rook because he'll lose a pawn. So maybe it's, I'm not exactly sure that he'd somehow he'd put more pressure on it. <laughs> I know the gross supers, they end up doing that. So Fabi's like, not, not even going to even think about that. So he just says, Yes, I, li I liquidated the center. I do have um, an advantage because now my light square bishop, but your knight is way too strong. It's attacking my rook and it's attacking my pawn. It's an outpost. I don't like it. So he goes, I'm going to take it. H takes. And Fabi, He's super grandmaster, 28-23 here in 2016. He's like, wow, you know. He's he's like, everybody wants to strive to his level. I do. I want to strive to become a super. I know you guys do, grandmaster. But they even um, make mistakes because they're human. They're not always going to play the most perfect move. He plays e4, which in theory... E4, he, he probably saw something in, from a game that he, or the engine, or something, told him that this move was good. Because if you notice, this bishop um, is free to roam from B8 to H2 diagonal. Which, in theory, would be a good idea. But there's also a flaw in it. And I know you guys see what the flaw is. The bishop here is now free 
and guess what it's attacking when this rook moves the rooks under fire so Topolov has the ability to move a rook potentially to f7 and there would be an attack on the rook on h8 <clears throat> so you have to always take into consideration that so rook to f7 like what we talked about <clears throat> and uh, Fabi plays another uh, it's interesting another dubious move which in theory would make sense because you who who would actually play <laughs> rook to h um, h to f8 you, you'd have to have seen that <clears throat> you're giving up a pawn so he takes takes and then now you have this I understand then you're attacking here boy that is a interesting idea who would want to go in for this this basically is perpetual why has a perpet and Fabi wants more than just a perpet so he's going to try rook hg8 you, you know what so you take my pawn you know what if you take my pawn good for you <clears throat> but what I'm going to do now is potentially bring my other rook over and you really can't move here you could move there <clears throat> but now Fabi's threatening mate so if rook takes rook takes he's threatening mate so he'd have to play uh, f3 and in that line we potentially could take and bishop would take because we'd want to seal this up we wouldn't want to take with a pawn I guess we could but that ends up becoming a weakness as well we want to keep this shut tight so g uh, g7 is played which mm, is an interesting idea because now it's guarded by the bishop and this rook now is free ability to roam potentially rook to f6 which would cause some problems with the h5 pawn <clears throat> and also the queen could slide in so uh, king a7 just getting out of there excuse me but there is one sitch <laughs> you're on the same diagonal as this yikes you're on the same diagonal so if this knight ever gets removed you have a uh, potential bishop there I know you can intercept there so you're okay you're still okay so be calm there's no worries no pins the Queen's safe so everybody calm down everything's good <laughs> so uh, Queen takes pawn knight knight to d3 uh, kinda dubious move because the idea is potentially he wants to play maybe knight in get this knight mobilized <clears throat> and potentially um, he wants to play um, d4 and maybe try to create his own uh, pass pawn bishop takes e takes and then um, e1 rookie one uh, bishop c5 which is an interesting idea because he should try to push and then after takes then I'm not really sure what potential maybe he can grab this pawn here and maybe be a pawn up maybe something like that And now he's in a pickle because of that. So really he can't grab that pawn. Topolov doesn't see that. He tries to, it makes sense, he tries to go for attack. Because if the queen's there, of course you're going to want to um, attack. So rook c8. Uh, queen g5, which is another mistake. Now, now uh, Fabi <clears throat> has a chance of taking the knight. Have takes, then you have a queen check with potentially a push happening. Fabi actually plays bishop to uh, d4. Tomalov missed 
is an opportunity to play queen takes and this would have won the game basically for Fabi. I mean for Topolov. He plays rook to uh, e1 which I have no idea what that actually does. Takes which is a mis which is an inaccurate mistake. Takes and then queen d2. Knight b7. Now it's equal. Rook f e8. So it's going to end up a draw potentially. He can just take here. And then he'd have to come back. And do you really you get a pawn, I I get it, but and then you're guarding here, so I think you're still okay. Cause now your queen's guarding that, so if rook takes queen takes and pawn takes knight takes and are you okay? I don't know. So takes, bishop takes, d4. This was a disaster move. C takes, and knight to uh, c4. Yeah. That is true. But you always got to remember one thing. They're humans. They make mistakes. So queen uh, there. Now Fabi's <clears throat> potentially, yeah, uh, that, that was a blunt, uh, very not good move. <laughs> takes and then queen b3 check so takes it's you know what we have to remember they're uh, they're human make the same mistakes that we do so you can't get upset with them. So more likely, when he did that, best move would probably be uh, c2. This is actually best. And then if queens, now you take, king takes, then you queen. And I that's mate. So that, you can't really take at that point. So you'd probably... Um, you wouldn't be able to queen. So maybe knight. I think you still have the same problem though. Because even if you did this, you can just take and when the queen takes, you take there and it's still mate. So I'm trying to find if there's any other way to kind of handle that. <coughs> hmm. Maybe knight a3, but then I think you still have the same sitch. There's no way to get away from. You'd have to somehow. Hmm. Maybe something like that. It takes. Then you queen. And. Now you can actually pick up the knight and guard this pawn, so it's game over. Yeah. Now we're going to look at a uh, Magnus Carlsen versus, uh, that's black. He's playing the, the French advance. So, or not French, well, yeah, I guess it is a type of French advance. 
I think it is, yeah. And so what we have to do is remember um, that the great team in play it, <clears throat> even though the computers have kind of dismissed it as kind of a drawish line, uh, the supers still play it. So if they still play it, I think we should consider it in part of our repertoire. Part of our arsenal, as they would say. E4, E6, D4, D5, E, C. These are standard lines. And you get to all, you get to move five almost out of the entire end, uh, opening. You get five moves. If you memorize these, you get five moves. Then from here, it branches off into a, <laughs> a lot of them. But the main one that's most popular at this moment, guys, is uh, Bishop D7. Uh, Bishop E2. Knight G. Uh, E7. With, of course, the idea white, black's not going to um, play pawn takes because you know what will happen. He'll take back and then <clears throat> Alexander will get his um, knight to c3. And we don't want a knight on c3. We want our knight to, um, to be either on e2, like what Grandmaster Sam Williams says, are on a3. So that they're on bad squares, they don't get to go to the glorious c3 pawn a uh, square. So castles, knight g6. You know what? <laughs> Madness is going, you know what? You, you're not, I'm not going to take, I'm not the one that's going to push it. You are going to have to push it. What are you going to do with your bishop? What are you going to do with your knight? So g3, which now that weakened the light squares. So if a light square bishop ever comes off the board, hello, you're in a pickle with uh, h3. So bishop to uh, e7, just a waiting move, just a waiting move saying, you know what? What you're going to do, Alexander? What you're going to do? h4, Alexander's like, I'm just going to push. Minus castles, <clears throat> h5, knight h8. Not, not to worry, there's no problem. At the right moment, f6 can come, the knight can come back into the battle, into the fray. Not a problem at all. So, the knight on h8 isn't out of the fight, he's just resting for his time in the sun to shine like a fine warrior. So h6, g6, which is a uh, slight inaccuracy. c4, d takes c4, or c takes d4, c takes d4, e takes d4, and uh, he missed out on creating an isolated pawn for Magnus to worry about. Because then if, uh, if knight takes, queen takes, potentially, maybe we even have uh, bishop to g5, and of course bishop to g5, we might, we might even play um, queen f, and then if, and if takes, takes, we've kind of solidified down to more that this pawn is a weakness more than a strength. So eventually we're we're gonna more likely play f5, knight to f7, and we're gonna target this pawn. But uh, Alexander plays knight to a3, which is a mistake. It's not a it's not a blunder. It's just a mistake. F3 f6. This allows. Um, Fabi to go, uh, not Fabi, sorry, I don't know why I was thinking Fabi last game. This allows Magnus, I apologize, Magnus, if you're listening. I got the players mixed up. I, I know who you are. <laughs> I, know, I know that this game is your game is black. Okay, F6, which this will break down the center and potentially open up 
and then allow for a, a huge attack. That's one thing I noticed that Magnus does is he builds up for an attack. He doesn't rush. That's one thing that you have to learn if you're going to be a good player. Don't rush. If you if there's no, as uh, Sam Williams says, crash, bang, uh, boom of an attack, just develop a piece. Get your worst piece to the best spot. So like if we took and then uh, maybe Bishop took here, what's Black's worst piece if Magnus didn't have a plan? If he didn't have a plan, what what would be the worst piece that would be needing to be developed? Of course, you guys see the knight on h8. So what would we do if it was our turn? And if we didn't, of course, take. But of course we would take. I know that. We would play our knight, which is our worst piece, um, to f7. And now we're mobilizing our worst piece to a potential strong spot. And it also has two targets. Oops. Sorry, what the? My, come on, work with me. Uh oh. Hold on. Just turn it off so it doesn't do anything weird. Hold on. Sometimes the mouse has a uh, sitch. Now let's see if it's good. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, batteries sometimes don't connect to their circuitry. Like, sometimes our uh, knowledge doesn't connect to actually what we wanted to do. So, kind of, I guess we can use that as a learning lesson as well. Our thoughts, if they don't uh, congeal properly in chess, will end up being like that mouse not working. So he takes, and then Bish takes now. Fabi is, uh, Fabi, I did that again. Uh, Magnus is uh, holding on to d4 with a bishop and, oops, and a knight. So uh, Alexander had an opportunity to go for this pawn. So he's going to try it again with uh, knight to b5. Which Magnus knows he's not going to be able to... <clears throat> Of always keep that pawn because if worse comes to worse, um, Alexandra can actually go b3 and then bishop b2 and then eventually he's going to get that pawn. So Madness just says, You can have the pawn. You know what? I'm going to mobilize my worst piece. And so he mobilizes his knight. The bishop goes to f4. Uh, which I have no idea why he played that. He should have just picked up that. I I know it's, we would call that pawn grubbing, but you kind of you don't want your opponent to hold on like that. You sometimes got to take the piece and then play against the isolated pawn. I also with, through the studies of the master method of Simon Williams, he said the best spot to place a knight is of course in front. You gotta barricade and then destroy. I believe it was Ninovich that said that. I may be wrong. If I am, you could put it in there and I'll quote the right uh, you know, chess player. I want to give credit where credit's due. So G, G5. So uh, Bishop C7. Queen goes to e2, which is even Magnus makes uh, inaccurate moves. So he made an inaccurate move mistake. Potentially bishop uh, to it says e5. Oh, no, bishop c uh, c8. That's right. Because all you have to do to win this bishop now is to play a6. The knight moves. And then you pick up a bishop. So that it makes sense. So rookie one. <clears throat> Alexander has a potential discovery. <coughs> Excuse me. So rook A to uh, E8. So now if the bishop moves, queen takes, 
queen takes, rook takes, and rook takes. No discovery that causes Magnus any harm. So he's fine. Rook c1. A3 to kick the knight out. Um, not the best. Remember, we want to mobilize our pieces. We want to, because it's basically the center is potentially closed. I know it doesn't make sense to trade off pieces, because in theory, we've learned from principle, if you have a isolated pawn, you don't want to trade pieces. You want to keep them on the board. So Fabi, uh, Fabi Magnus is um, uh, following principles. But to the computer, that is because it's calculated probably like nodes out to 20 to 30 moves. That was an inaccurate move. But to a human, that makes sense. So knight bd2, and then uh, bishop takes knight, which I really don't agree with that. I don't think that that's the most accurate move. I prefer the move like what the computer says, uh, g3, and then bishop to f, and <clears throat> you do win a, a knight. So he missed that tactic, but you know what? We all make mistakes, so we learn. Even the supers aren't perfect. Uh, knight takes d4, uh, bishop, uh, queen f6, and the bishop uh, goes to b6. And the knight takes. It's that pawn. What does that pawn have really to do with the sitch? There's really no threat. I kind of would take it too if it was. <clears throat> if it was me, I would take it too. But it was a mistake by the computer. So knight uh, takes c6, bishop takes, which is dubious. It's kind of, it'd be an awkward idea, because you would think that wouldn't the bishop be able to hold? And yeah, but you get his pawn too. <clears throat> so it's a trade-off. <laughs> Very awkward, let's just say. Bishop takes uh, bishop d4. Bishop uh, queen g6. One second. I want to make sure the stream's doing okay. Hold on, guys. Ah, perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, queen d2. And then knight f5, which allows for an attack and potentially we're going to try to um, play knight to h pawn takes takes and <clears throat> there's a, kind of an open attack here and not too uh, fairly too well for Alexander um, Alexander made a really bad mistake which is uh, bishop g4 didn't need to do that Bishop takes, queen takes, and then queen f4. We, we should have kept our queen here, and then uh, this would win a pawn. So this is forced line. He would have to take there. Then we take, and then take. And Magnus has an isolated pawn. Actually, it's one pawn up. So Magnus would be a pawn up here. So there, uh, queen takes, takes, rook takes, bishop takes, rook c8, and then um, <clears throat> rook to f8. Now, now Magnus is heading out towards a draw. King f1. Now he's going to try to mobilize his pawns, his pawn. Now he's mobilizing his other pawn. And now he's going to try to get a passed h pawn. Pawn takes, g takes. So 
So equal. And this is what Magnus is known for. He just grinds his opponents down. He did that with Nakamura on um, <clears throat> the Grand Tour one. Uh, he beat Nakamura in an endgame. It was a pure draw that he could have taken a draw, but he just kept grinding and grinding and grinding. And eventually, hit, um, Naka broke. B uh, rook to uh, B D7. Bishop takes. Pawn takes. So now they both have pass pawns. <clears throat> Two pass pawns. <laughs> kind of funny looking, though. H. King comes over, G, and the king now defends. Oops, my bad, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, let me get my, there we go, F. <coughs> Rather than uh, just settling for the draw, he tries to go for the kill. <clears throat> Which rook to H. And that lost a piece. Still wins. B6, which we're trying to get a pass pawn. So if we can get it here, even though he gets there, we're down material, yes. <clears throat> so E. Rook D, and then if Rook comes, of course, in front, what do you do? Attack the piece, game over, everything's lost. Okay. I'll be right back. <clears throat> we'll look at another game in the French defense. This isn't the advanced. This is a different line. I think it is the advanced, but I'll have to check because it was from another one of our uh, French games. Okay, I'll be right back.
one sec. I'll be right back. I just gotta. I'm gonna grab a different chair real quick. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Alrighty. <clears throat> this is a game from uh, Niall Short. As Black and his opponent, who is basically 2550. And he's close to 2700. He's like 5 points from 2700. So he would have made it the 2700 club, probably from this game here. Maybe. I, I, I'm hoping so. Uh, much better. Okay. D4, E6, E5. Of course, the French advanced. And he took here with... Uh, because remember the main line goes here and then, see? <clears throat> if he just, uh, we just take. Bishop D. Knight to uh, C6. If we can, we'll try to hold. Castles. Knight G uh, to E7. Uh, Excuse me. Uh, bishop to f4, g. So now we're attacking. We're attacking this pawn, and we're also attacking this bishop. Bishop g3, bishop e7. We're gonna try to castle, and then, of course, the idea after castles is f6. So uh, bi uh, so a3, which is. Main the and the main idea of B four. Also, it stops the knight from coming in. So multitude of ideas. F five. This is uh, a big, uh, really important move because the light square bishop at a certain point when if the pieces get mobilized it becomes a sitch for black. So h3 he wants to get his bishop to um, h2. That's kind of the uh, idea right there. Is, um, so bishop d2, d7 which now all we gotta do is move our queen and we've uh, s have gone to a middle game. When the rooks are connected that usually means the middle game already, especially with Castle too. Before a5. Okay, hold on one second. Alrighty. I had a particle in my glasses that were uh, pretty. Ugh. Just had to get it off. Okay, so a5, which. He plays b5, because if he takes, the rook would most definitely take, and there would be a, an attack here. So, uh, like Grandmaster Sam Williams says, if you, got one, if you have one weakness that you're hammering hard on, try, if you can, to make a second weakness. And so that kind of would, what, that's what would happen is white would have a weakness on b4 if he, uh, I mean, on a3. So b5. Knight e7, and then a4. So white's trying his hardest to get rid of all of his weaknesses if he can. So bishop to, but he left a, every move has a drawback. Hey, how you doing? Every move has a drawback. So when that move happened, the bishop now has an outpost on b4. 
and attacking the rook. So rook e uh, two. White starting to get cramped, <laughs> really bad. By allowing this to happen, the takes here, and not taking back and trying to somehow get that pawn back, it's a cramping position. Not fun. F4. So h, bishop h2, then knight to uh, h, which now, because the center is totally locked up. If, if the knight would have taken, knight takes knight, queen takes, this would be a pretty sizable attack. Because then we get g4, I mean g5, h5, and potentially we could start hacking away. And maybe even king h1, rook g1, rook uh, f8. We get all of our forces in. Our artillery starts hammering, shooting cannonballs. Boom, boom, boom at our opponent. Knight bd2. Bishop to uh, c3. <clears throat> this attacks the the rook, and it also does something that really will help us. It fortifies our uh, pawn on uh, d uh, uh, d4. So we want to, if we can, because we want to slowly consume space from our opponent. We uh, want to have that. Rook a uh, two, so that that was actually a blunder as well. So knight takes check. Knight takes and uh, bishop to e. Now uh, Nile has did the I call it the zigzag. There's two ways you can get your bishop outside the pawn chain from d7. It's to go to a, this diagonal here, or you can zigzag out. Bishop d f3, which is uh, it. It's kind of dubious, but now we have a pin. So this is uh, OK for us again. So bishop takes rook, queen takes. Now queen g. Now, if you notice, our pieces are starting to harmonize as black. They're they're getting into a harmony kind of thing. From if uh, you guys ever watched uh, Ariel, and uh, she does in her series Harmony Song. That's where that's from. Uh, okay, uh, knight b3, and now we're gonna try to double up g. That's Actually, not the most accurate move. Remember, we don't really want to push pawns for our king. This would have been a better move because it holds here, it blocks the queen's access to g2. g6 only blocks the bishop in and really doesn't do anything. Knight c8. There's no uh, point to have the knight over there anymore. So, we're missing uh, one more defender. Let's just bring him in. Bring our warrior in. He wants to be part of the action too. It's not fair to leave our knight out of the fight. He wants to come in and get get some, uh, um, you know, valiant medals for victory. So don't don't ever forget your uh, troops, your guys, your army uh, relies on you. To help them become uh, stronger, so that's you're the general. Remember that, and your pieces either die or live by your decisions, my friends. F4. Yikes. Hello, that's kind of scary. 97, which <laughs> actually helps um, black. The knight f5, bishop takes, rook takes. Now we have a queen to uh, g6, and pawn takes. I mean, rook takes uh, f. Surprisingly, we kept our pawn the whole entire game. Finally, finally, that bishop gets out. Finally, the <laughs> black's dark square bishop gets into the action. I mean, white's dark square bishop.
little late though. King H, Rook F, and now what we're going to try to do is <clears throat> see if we can't um, swing over our Rook because if if the King side's locked down, you have to go where there's more targets, which is on the Queen side. Knight takes, Rook C, uh, one. Queen moves. So e8. Knight e2. Now we're doubling up. And we're not going to trade. Why? Why do that? We have a we have a pretty good grip on our opponent. We don't want to uh, give him any uh, air. Bishop c. Now we want to trade off for his bishop, of course, because this will only help us because we'll be exchange up. Bishop takes, rook takes, and knight d4. Pawn takes, knight takes, and now we're we're gonna try to get our pawn involved for to escort down the board. This actually would have been a really good move because they have takes. There's really no way to stop the queen of this pawn. G takes, takes, and then uh, rook g2, which is um, a tremendous blunder. This knight move is the really the only move that would hold uh, white's position together. That, and then d, d2. Bishop, <clears throat> and then uh, White uh, um, resigns here. Let's see how we're doing. Good, good, good. So let's work on some uh, puzzles now, guys. Work on like three or four puzzles. Since we've gone over three games, that's a lot of work. I understand. Now it's time to have some fun. Puzzles are fun. Just got to get a drink of water. Hold on. Okay, Doki. So I moved Bishop to B7. Did we? What did he leave behind? I'm thinking that potentially. <laughs> this is kind of odd. I'm thinking uh, either queen takes h6, and if g takes h6, um, knight. Uh, F uh, six check. That's an idea. Yeah, that's that's an idea there. Also, I guess that is the only idea. So let me see. So takes, pawn takes, knight check,
And I think we pick up a pawn at that line. I'd, I'd say that that's right. Oh. Hmm. I think we're equal at that point. Because if we, uh, <clears throat> if we take here, I think he uh, traps our knight. Should have took it out farther. Yeah, this picks up a um, a bishop. Should have seen this. Very simple uh, setup. And we just pick up a uh, bishop. Drat. That's my fault, guys. Sorry about that. That's okay. We'll we'll get it back. We'll get it back. Just fo we just gotta focus down and uh, not. Um, not rush. My first idea if, uh, if I was black would be to check out um, there's two ideas here oops there would be uh, queen uh, takes f2 you always gotta look at that or uh, queen e3 <clears throat> which would be a pin and then uh, if we wanted to do the pin right so now let's let's take a look because this of course is a bad move but you have to look at it because that'd be a check you always gotta look at those moves just take us take a second look at it if it's bad dismiss it and move on to the next one so our next idea is queen uh, e3 right now we have to take into consideration queen takes uh, f7 check then we have to look at rook to g7 And where does the queen go? Um, let's say that the queen will come back here. So this is what we're talking about. Queen here. Let's say that uh, the b takes up. And we'll say that the queen goes to e6. Now what we can do is take with check. And if he comes over here we can always take the knight so you have to take in consideration that setup or we could just take the pawn too well That that's an idea here. Or we could play Queen takes H three. <coughs> that's also an idea. Because if I didn't think about this, <clears throat> but if we uh, play queen to, oh huh, no, he can't really do anything about that. Which one is better? Hmm.
We do, though, and uh, queen takes h3, they'll pick up a pawn, though. So if we... Uh, But what if we, uh, but if we play queen takes h3, uh, what's wrong with that move? What's wrong with queen takes h3? He can just move. I th I believe he can move, right? The king, the king, uh, the king just uh, the king moves, and we're good to go, right? <clears throat> But what what if the what if um, rather than the queen doing anything? But what what yeah. But what what would happen though? What if we tried queen to uh, e3 and then the king went to f1? What would happen if th in that case? So we you have to look at this scenario. What happens in that case? Because what if the queen doesn't, um, yeah, what, what if the queen doesn't, uh, you know, I mean, take, what if the queen doesn't take? You always have to consider those ideas. Get it all wrong here, guys. Well, no. Drat, I was hoping somehow to interject um, bishop in here, but we need this. We need this bishop to uh, guard this pawn here. Because if we played uh, bishop takes, he'd play queen takes, rook up, and then he'd he could actually potentially do perpetual. If we took, it'd be perpet. The reason I'm liking um, queen takes now that uh, queen takes um, h3 is that if uh, king uh, f1 we have bishop bishop takes uh, g2 check <clears throat> then if the rook takes back we're uh, good to go. I can see the merit in both of them, but I'm just trying to figure out which one is best.
So queen e3. Give me a taste for. But what? That's that's the whole thing. What do we do if he doesn't take? We don't have a and and he moves his king. We don't have a follow up. Yeah, I'm thinking that <clears throat> the only follow up we have. Oh, boy, we were wrong. I was wrong here. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I was wrong. I am wrong again. Wowzers. That's the problem. Ratatouille. That. Oh, wow. You were right. That was right. I'm I, sorry for doubting. I, I didn't, for some reason, it didn't click that that was... Hmm. Yeah. I did not even see that he could uh, win a, a whole rook there. Wowzers. He would have been up in a, in a whole piece. Yikes. Well, we're learning. Well, <clears throat> we have to uh, make sure that the invisible things actually uh, come to, uh, that we can see. That's what uh, grandmasters are able to do is they can see, and they, uh, Simon Williams says that he takes his position where he wants a piece to be, and then he works back to how to get there. So we should, we should have, uh, worked back when we wanted the rook to be there. We should have worked back and seen how we could have actually got that. Yeah. I would say that that looks winning. Are we missing? Because I, I hear White has a back rank issue. That was a, a good thing. The uh, the human center pawn. I I we that's a good uh, <clears throat> eye there. Yeah, you have to always remember though. Like Grandmaster Simon Williams said this that he one time had a uh, grandmaster that when he was a kid that came and taught and they uh, he raised his hand uh, for a puzzle and they asked him this question the grandmaster did okay that why did you move that move and uh, he said this um, because it, it looked good and the grandmaster was really nice He's, he says but why did you move that move? Why why did you move that move? And so he gave a he gave a reason, but he uh, at first it looked good, and so that's one thing that we have to do. We have to give a reason for our moves. So like if we were to play knight takes right, we notice uh, the reason for this move why it works is if the rook takes right. Sorry, here we have to do wrong colors. If the rook takes, we play rook takes queen and we pick up a queen for a rook. So we uh, we get a queen for a rook. And he uh, he could he'll take back, but we'll be up um, a lot of material. I think it's about yeah we'd be up um, 
he can actually he couldn't take back because if he did we would actually take his rook so he can't take back so this right here if we played here he took there we would take here he would take here and then our bishop would uh, take the rook we'd be up a whole um, basically piece in that line yeah And now we don't want to take with the queen. We want to take with the bishop. Because when he takes back, we now have, we, it is almost equal. It is somewhat equal. But we have to remember that now we have this weakness here. And when we push this pawn, we'll have this and this and then next we can bring our queen in. We'll have all of our piece, pieces uh, snipering the king. Exactly, I agree with you on that. Okay, Doki, now let's see what we got here. So, what did he do? Okay, he ret we moved our knight, he retreated his bishop back. So that he can get some defense for the knight. I'm actually looking, yeah, that's what I was looking at. Good find there, because what what does that do? It draws the queen away from the protection of the, it draws the queen to a spot where when we take, when we take here, we have a discovery on the queen. And it's also check. Sorry, I got there. Disco the queen's here. We'd have a discovery on the queen, and it'd be check. Yeah, exactly. Then you take the queen. Good find there. Good job. Good job. Great work there. Yeah, exactly. If he like what like what you're saying, if he moves um we'll just say he moves the queen, what do we do? You uh, can just come crashing in if you want. Bishop takes, and then knight takes. And now we're going to pick up a, uh, when the king moves, we actually grab a, we can grab a bishop. Rather than uh, grab the knight, uh, rook, why not just pick up a whole piece? And then if he takes here, you can actually uh, first grab the knight. Oops, actually, sorry, you don't want to grab the knight. My bad. Yeah, he has to uh, retreat the knight back, and then you take. Because if he uh, tries to, let's say, move the queen over here, we just pick up, uh, and then now we get a uh, piece here. Because <clears throat> we want to do that, and if he took here, wham. Actually, first, we can, you could check if you wanted to. And then if the king came up, you just grab. So it all depends. So that is, you are 100% right on overloaded piece. The bishop is over, I mean, the queen is overloaded. Trying to see if um, we 
rook takes, queen takes, then potentially rook there, but I don't know, do we accomplish enough with that? Trying to see, do we do we get enough compensation for that? Hmm. Oh, not a problem. How you doing, Fox? Just want to check to make sure the stream's health is okay. Perfect. Stream's health is good. Trying to see if potentially if rook takes <clears throat> knight's a good idea. Hmm, knight a5. That's an interesting idea. That for sure is a nice idea. That actually threatens mate. Wow. That threatens mate. I'm actually, that's nice. That's a nice move. That's a really nice move.
Evet. <gülüyor> One second. <coughs> hmm. Excuse me. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see any wrong idea with that. Me too. It's going to be fun. I hope we're, I believe we're almost first in the Olympics too. So I think we're going to be doing good. We may, if we hold um, to our, um, you know, as they say, guns, <laughs> uh, and we uh, stay true to our team's strength, we should get first. You know what was really sad was the ladies, um, you know, Olympics was they were so close to first, so close. Now they're back to third, but they're facing Italy, so they should do fairly well. If if they get a four for four, uh, I think they they have enough because their our team is stronger than theirs, um, basically point wise. But that doesn't mean that. Um, you know they're gonna win because you know you know points uh, like my teacher said don't don't mean everything. So what you're gonna what? Uh, but if we if our points do hold true, we should get four out of four, and uh, that would be really good. That would uh, catapult our uh, women's team to first, and that'd be nice. Wow, <clears throat> that's interesting. Let's see, queen takes g4, okay. And then rook takes... Yeah, I think you're right. Let's give that a shot. And it takes here, we take here. And if he take, he can't, he can't take here because of the queen. So we're up a whole rook. Let's see how we're doing on our stream. Perfect. I'm um, I'm probably gonna do one more with you guys, because for some reason my throat's a little uh, dry right now. I think I I think I talked a little too much, but you know what? <clears throat> That's the wonderful thing that the Lord has given us a voice box. But you don't want to damage it. That is true. Okay, let's see how we do here. Let's get let's give it our our all, guys. Let's give it our all. There is a famous game where um, Bobby Fischer traded three pieces for a queen. So maybe it has something to do with that. Like if we um, if we play uh, E takes F6 
He takes f6. I'm just I'm just going over a line. Um, well, I guess that doesn't work. So the queen could take. Yeah, I see what you guys are saying. We don't have enough time to win all the material. I think that has to be. I think that has to be it. No, no. Say, hey, you know what? As long as we're learning and getting better, there's no reason to be sorry. You guys are doing great. Let's see. So bishop takes. <clears throat> I'm trying to see though if uh, if knight if knight takes uh, f3 doesn't hold the pawn. See, Okay. Oh yeah, you guys are right. That's right. Yep. Yeah, good job. Good work. Good work. I'm thinking that potentially uh, a. I'm thinking potentially. Uh, a three, a three, uh, bishop, bishop takes. Um, D two, and then. Uh, B4 to attack the queen. And then we have two pieces that are hanging. What do you guys think? What do you guys think on that move? Oh, that is true. Yeah, you're. I I agree with you. Yeah. <clears throat> I agree with you. I I do. I see. I see what you're saying, Fox. I think that is. I 
I think I think you're right on that. Yeah. Yeah, good job. Cuz this is act this is why it it doesn't work, guys. If he takes here, then we play here, right? Uh queen f6 and if we try taking here, the bishop retreats back just like just exactly right. That was an excellent puzzle. I'll give you guys the uh <clears throat> the number If you guys want the puzzle, that's the puzzle number. Do one more, and then I gotta have to log because my voice is getting a little croaky. <clears throat> yeah, we there they always have some like that. They always have some like that for sure. <clears throat> Let me see here. Trying to see what can we do here. Um, I was looking at um, Rook G1. Let's look at that. Rook G1.
trying to see if I can't, <clears throat> excuse me, make a knight e4 work. Or potentially <clears throat> knight to uh, But I don't think that does. This is a tough one. <clears throat>
Let's see, knight takes d5, queen takes knight. Okay, what happens? Okay, knight takes here, and then queen takes. Okay. I don't know if um well, maybe we do um win because we could actually potentially play queen takes bishop takes and then queen takes huh interesting I think this was this is your idea. Oh. That loses. See, that's why I don't think... I, I'm thinking that it has to be, guys, um, rook g1. Not sure what to do here. What do you guys think? We gotta make a decision.
Okay. Now, guys, put in your lines. We'll look at them, and then we're going to choose. We got to choose. Okay, let's go for it. Okay, we'll log it. We'll stop here. Good job, guys. I'll put that number of the puzzle in for you guys, too. Okay, do you guys have any questions before I log off? Any questions? I'll give you guys a minute to uh, to think about it. Okay, Fox is done. Anybody else have anything on this puzzle? I'll give you till uh, twelve fifty-seven. What?
Kaboom. There's your mate. I'll go over that real quick for, for you. I'll go over that one more time. Okay. Well, if you guys have no more questions, then uh, yep, that's right. So I will leave you that. You want the puzzle number? I think I put it in there for you guys. I'll do it again. There we go. Okay. I will leave you guys with that. You guys have the puzzle number to go over everything if you have any questions. So that'll be great. Okay. Well, guys, I gotta say, we did great. Gotta keep pushing forward. Remember, knowing it's not enough, we must apply. Well, it's not enough, we must do. So we gotta just keep applying our knowledge, keep applying our, and, and be willing to actually do it, and we will. Plateaus are all based on us. Yeah. Can we go the distance? Yes, we can through the Lord. We gotta keep pushing forward, and always, always remember: if you have a line that you want to go over that's in the opening, put it in the database and pick the highest-rated player for a win, and maybe for a loss to see why they lost and why they won. And remember: take your losing games as an opportunity to learn from them. Don't think of them as that you're a failure or anything. Remember, Hannibal Smith didn't get to be where he was by having a lot of ex successes. He probably made a lot of mistakes, and then he figured out what his mistakes were, fixed them, and then now he could predict what his opponents were going to do. So just keep that in mind. You know what? We're like the people that hang up our coat, hang up our hat, and we sit down, and we do the puzzles that most won't, and we study. And that's what we do, and that makes all the difference. Like coal, under pressure, becomes a diamond. So just keep that in mind, guys. Okay, and I'll leave you guys with that thought. As Wesley So says, through the Lord Jesus, as I say, God bless. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I'll see you guys next time on Chess Cruncher TV. Have a blessed morning, afternoon, and evening, and, uh, I'll, uh, and I'll be on tomorrow. You know what? We'll work on this, okay? And be blessed. And you know what? We're just going to keep pushing forward. Good job, guys. Go to your chest cruncher. Hurrah. Bye-bye, guys. Be blessed, and I'll see you tomorrow.